Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, Center for Libertarian Society, CYNLIBSSC.com on the internet. Email me at God, that's dog spelled backwards, God, at CYNLIBSSC.com. Here with an anarchy moment, here with elevated blood pressure. This is not, this is not what the anarchy moment is supposed to be about, but this is what I'm going to rant about to start things off. Fucking Toshiba. I bought a Toshiba hard drive. Powered the goddamn thing up nine times. It was, I was using it as an external, as a backup hard drive, so it wasn't installed in the computer and powered up every time I started the computer, thank God. After nine attempts, the fucking thing fails. It just After nine power-ups, the goddamn thing fails. It just sits there and clicks. So anyhow, in theory, because I bought it from Newegg, so I go to New, Newegg's website, and this is why when you get a new hard drive, if you're smart, you should test it, you know, burn it in. They actually make, well, they used to. I assume these still exist. They make software which is specifically designed to stress out your hard drive. So you'd put in your new hard drive and you run the software and it just makes it spin and read and write and everything like that so that if it's going to fail in the near future, it gets it to fail. And then you return it and you get a new one. So anyhow... Newegg does the returns within 30 days, but I got this in July of last year, and I've only used it a few times because it was a backup hard drive. So anyhow, according to the Newegg website, Toshiba has a two-year warranty on this thing. So I go to, do, I go to the Toshiba website. Jesus fucking Christ. What a nightmare. I navigate finally to the page where I can supposedly send in the information to get a replacement or find out about getting a replacement, whatever. And you have to go through this drop-down menu to select your device. And so all of these storage drives are in one drop-down menu. So there's this giant list of, of hard drives, and I've got to find my hard drive in there, and I can't find the fucking thing. And there's a search box where you can type in some information, and it will search through that list for you. But I type in every fucking number on the hard drive, and none of them show the information. Okay, so, so I get on the live chat, and I'm like, hey, this is a hard drive I got. Can I get a goddamn fucking replacement for it? And the guy fucking tells me, well, you have to call this phone number. And I wrote back, I said, why do I have to call a phone number? Do they not have email? It's the year 2014. So he says, well, okay, here's the website you can go to. I'm like, great, thank you. So I go to the website. It's the same fucking website that I just contacted the guy for the live chat from. So he sends me right back to where I was at when I couldn't fucking get the answer to my question. So then I post something on Twitter and said, hey, what the fuck? This is my heart you know, aimed at Toshiba's Twitter handle for technical assistance, for customer help, whatever it is. And I said, what the fuck? This is my hard drive. Can I get it re replaced? Yes or no? And they tweet to me, well, you have to go to this website. We can't handle that. So their support people on Twitter can't actually handle a support question. So I click on the link to the website. Guess what website it sends me to? You got it. So I find a fucking email address on the fucking website after digging around. That's for technical support. So I send an email to the email address. I said, this is the hard drive I have. It failed. I bought it in July 2013. Can I get... Yes, July 2013. Can I get a fucking replacement? They write back. Well... You have to go to this website. Oh, wait. You mean the same fucking website that I emailed you from? Or, of course, you have to give them a phone call. Oh, and the email started with, Dear Valued Customer. You always know you're dealing with old people when they start their emails with things like, Dear Valued Customer, 
And if you want any technical support, you have to give somebody a fucking phone call. Because old people love to talk on the phone, because they can get you on the phone, they can talk about how their back hurts, and they passed a kidney stone, and how back in 1907, when they were your age, they had to fucking walk uphill, and how kids today don't listen to their parents, and all this other shit. Old people, would you shut the fuck up and die? Would you please shut the fuck up and die? Toshiba is obviously run by technically incompetent fuckwads who are old people, and if they're not physically old, they're mentally old. They need to fucking die. It is the year 2014. You should be able to do your goddamn technical support efficiently and effectively through this thing called the fucking internet. I know it's this new thing. I know you old people. And what's really, you know what I find interesting is technical companies always have the shittiest websites. It's like this Toshiba website. If you go to it, and like I say, so it, when you're trying to do your choices here, so you select your choice. Your first choice is like for the hard drive is storage devices. So I click on that and under it, there's this long drop-down menu, which of course you can't see the whole menu at once, you have to scroll through it, that has all the devices listed in it, but there's no rhyme or reason or order to them. And I try searching on the part numbers, like I said on the hard drive, you can't get them. The fucking website is goddamn unusable. Toshiba is a multi-billion dollar international corporation. Their website fucking sucks balls. Hire some people to do some goddamn usability testing on your fucking website. Jesus fucking H. Christ on a stick. Will you please fucking hire somebody to do some goddamn usability testing on your fucking piece of shit website. Fucking hell. Okay. Speaking of old people, a while back on Stating the Obvious, I read a bit of a newspaper article about the Japanese soldier whose name I will probably mispronounce, Hiru Onoda, H-I-R-O-O-O-N-O-D-A. He was the soldier who stayed in the jungles of the Philippines after World War II was over and did not believe that the war was over and the Japanese had surrendered and all this other stuff. And I talked a little bit about him, so I just wanted to mention that I have started reading his book no Surrender, My 30-Year War. And I'm like truly just barely into it, so no commentary yet, but I wanted to tell you that that was coming because I read the article about him. I talked a little bit about him. And so now I'm going to read the book and find out what he's got to say, and we'll probably revisit that in the future. The other thing I want to talk about, in addition to bitching about Toshiba and how badly their fucking website and their customer support service sucks, balls and how I will never buy another fucking Toshiba hard drive again in my life is this other book I read, which has nothing to do with philosophy, although it kind of does. Saw this at the library and it looked interesting, so I picked it up. It is called Catch and Release by Lawrence Block. And it is a, I don't know what you want to call the genre, crime, mystery, something like that. It's a genre I don't normally read, but it caught my eye. I glanced through it, and yeah, I picked it up, and it's really fucking good. It is a series of 17 short stories by Lawrence Block, imagine that, who apparently is a MWA Grandmaster, which I didn't know what that was till I read the little blurb. Hey, imagine that. Back here it says, Lawrence Block is a Mystery Writers of America Grandmaster, and has won multiple Edgar and Seamus awards and countless international prizes. So anyhow, if you like mystery or crime, I guess these are more crime short stories than what I would call mystery. If you like crime stories, 
this is a really interesting book. It was really good. The guy is, I can see why he is a grand master, because his writing is fantastic. The stories are fantastic. He's got two really neat ones in here, which are the longer ones in the piece. One is called Speaking of Lust, and the other one is called, what's the other one called? Why can I not remember? Speaking of Lust, oh, and Speaking of Greed, in which five characters are telling stories and having discussions about lust and about greed. And they're actually, that's the sort of philosophical part because it's they're telling each other these stories and then there's some philosophical discussion amongst them about what can be learned from those stories. And I can't talk. Hang on a second. Once again, as usual, I started doing a podcast without vocal warm-ups. Because, ah, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, it's going on 1 o'clock. I got shit to do today, unfortunately. As I said previously, this is a busy week for me. Hopefully on... Oh, God, I'm working Sunday, too. But anyway, hopefully soon I will get some proper episodes of Stating the Obvious out. And I got some other stuff in my brain that I want to do that will be fun and interesting. Anyhow, it's a series of crime short stories great writing check it out if you're into that kind of stuff that's my that's my non-philosophy book review for hopefully not for too long what else i'm i'm reading some other thing too i'm reading a vampire book that i've had sitting on my bookshelf for no joke well over oh god over 15 years it's a trilogy. I can't even remember the name of it offhand. But I finally started reading the first one in the trilogy. Also wrapped up the first season of American Horror Story. It was pretty fucking terrible. Way too soap opera-ish for me. I am thank God for the fast forward button. I may check out season two. Who knows? And I think my next serving up from Netflix is going to be the final disc of Game of Thrones season one. Which... As I've said, it was not up to Spartacus level, but it's still pretty interesting. So yeah, that's really about it. There's your fucking anarchy. No bitching about the state. Oh, yes. All right, I will bitch about the state. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> it's that time of year. I was on Facebook last night, which those of you who listen to this podcast on a regular basis know that me going on Facebook always leads to bad things because I have to read all this shit from status. There's some people I need to unfriend, but I'm just too fucking lazy to do it because that's I care so little about Facebook, I can't even be bothered to unfriend people that I can't stand anymore. I'm on the Facebook, and all this shit is scrolling by from the usual fucking left-wing status people because it's that time of year, right? We just paid income taxes. All this shit is scrolling by about all these blog articles from Jezebel and other fucking left-wing statist websites about all the corporations that didn't pay any income tax this year. I'm just like, what in the fuck is wrong with you people? All these liberal Democrats who are constantly whining about these corporations that don't pay taxes. Okay, now check me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm willing to be proven wrong about this. Hasn't Hussein Obama, the Messiah, a liberal Democrat, been president of the United States for six fucking years? Now, am I wrong about this? And isn't one house of Congress currently controlled by Democrats? So if the Democrats are going to save the poor people from the corporations, why are the corporations still not paying any taxes? See, it, it baffles me how you fucking left-wing statist can believe this shit. I mean, if Obama, your messiah, he who walks on water and was born without birth certificate, if he has not fixed things so that these corporations have to pay income taxes, that tells us one of two things. Either he can't, 
change the way the IRS operates, which tells us that the IRS does what it wants to do despite the government. It tells us that the IRS has more power than the elected officials, which of course the whole fucking wet dream fantasy of democracy is that a democratic government you know, does what the people want. Well, we have a democratically elected government. It's a Democrat party controlling the government. So since the IRS works for the government and the government works for the people and the IRS is letting the corporations get away without paying taxes, that must be because that's what you want. Since the Messiah has not changed things so that the corporations pay income tax, either that means he can't change things and the IRS does what it wants to do, or it means he doesn't want to change things, in which case that means that you're fucking stupid for having believed his bullshit about change. So it just fascinates me to no end how you people can be so fucking stupid. You think the government is going to regulate the corporations and protect you from the corporations. And then of course, also on the Facebook, I saw how the government is getting ready to start having regulations for electronic cigarettes because God forbid there be some aspect of your life that's not regulated by the government, right? We got to get some government action in on that, don't we? Meanwhile, however, the corporations are not paying any taxes. And that's your hope and that's your change. And that's six years of your Messiah, your Lord and Savior, Hussein Obama. He's going to spread the wealth around. He's going to make sure everybody gets a fair chance. He's going to bring hope and change. He's going to get those nasty corporations and he's going to look out for you poor people and you won't have to pay your mortgage and you won't have to worry about putting gas in your car because if you help him, he's going to help you.